So the topic is, is Jesus God according to the Quran and also the Bible? The Quranic, the, the biblical um, narrative is quite clear. Jesus is referred to as God many times. He says things only God can say and he does things only God can do. And even when we look into the Quranic narrative, Jesus does have some divine attributes. But I'll start with the Bible. Jesus uses divine titles to refer to himself that if he was just a prophet would be considered shirk and blasphemy. Jesus says in John chapter 8 verse 58, before Abraham was, I am. He's quoting from Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 where God says to Moses, tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. So when Jesus claims to be the I am of Exodus 3.14, he's claiming to be the God who sent Moses. Therefore, he is God of Moses. Jesus also uses the divine title of, of uh, first and last. In Revelation chapter one, verse 17, Jesus says, I am the first and I am the last. He's quoting from, ex from Isaiah chapter 44, verse six, where God says, I am the first and I am the last. But this is even a title used in the Quran. Allah is referred to as the first and the last. But here we have Jesus saying, I am the first and the last. So why is the Quranic narrative stealing a title of God and giving it to Allah? Jesus says, I am the first and the last. Allah says, he is the first and the last. This is a borrowing from Christian scripture, a title of God and referring it to the God of Muhammad. In Hebrews chapter one, verse three, uh, it says that Jesus is the exact imprint of the nature of God. So if Jesus shares nature with God, therefore he is God. Philippians chapter two, verse five to eight, tells us this also, that he has joint nature with God. This is what we call the hypostatic union. But even within the Quranic narrative, you see Jesus has divine attributes. You see that Jesus is given the ability to create. He breathes life into a clay bird. And this is an attribute that even Muhammad himself does not have. So according to the Quran, Jesus has a divine attribute that Muhammad himself does not have. So even the Quran places Jesus on a higher pedestal than the last and final prophet, supposedly. But let's also bear this in mind, that Quranic narrative that says Jesus created is not authentic, it's borrowed from an apocryphal source. So not only does the Quran portray Jesus as divine with divine attributes as of creation, they actually borrow this from a fake source. So the biblical narrative is quite clear, Jesus is God. John 20 verse 28, Thomas says in the Greek, the Lord of me and the God of me. If Jesus was just a good prophet, he would have to have said, do not call me that, I'm not Lord, I'm not God, I'm just a prophet. Instead he said, Thomas, you believe because you have seen me, blessed are those who believe and haven't seen me. So according to the Bible, it's quite clear Jesus is God. In Mark 2, he forgives sins. In Matthew chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 20 or 28, Jesus is worshipped. It's the same worship given, it's the same worship that is given to God in Revelation. According to the Bible, Jesus is clearly God. According to the Quran, Jesus has divine attributes that should only be given to God. Time. Thank you, Amen. Uh, Salam alaikum. Uh, peace be upon everyone. I hope uh, everyone uh, well. And uh, my name is uh, Islam Defender Yahya. And uh, uh, my brother here, uh, uh, Ben, he talked about uh, Jesus as God. And uh, the Bible actually confirms that uh, the God of the Bible, uh, Malachi 3.6, uh, Hebrew 1.12, Islam 102, 29, 20, 27, 27, and uh, Habakkuk 112. As the Bible teaches us that uh, the God doesn't change his nature. What's the nature of God that doesn't change? Uh, the nature that doesn't change, he is invisible, he is eternal, he is ever living, he is immortal, and he is all-knowing, he is all-powerful, he never forget, never get tired, never get rest, and uh, he, he create, and he is the one who actually gave the son the authority to perform those miracles which Jesus has done through his life as a sign to the Lordship of Israel, whom Jesus was sent to them to bring them back to the law of Moses, as Jesus did, didn't come with the law, but he came to fulfill and apply and keep the law and he teach obedience and to do the will of God. Uh, 
Now I will give uh, the proof of what, what I, uh, I said in Isaiah 40, 28. God is the creator. God is everlasting. He doesn't die. He's immortal, as I said. He will not grow tired or weary. While Jesus, he used to be, uh, couldn't find a place to sleep. And he used to be very tired and sometimes weary because he used to travel from uh, a village to another village to, to preach uh, his gospel. Uh, uh, Isaiah 44, verse number 6, Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there's no God. And Jesus will be seated on the right hand side from the mighty God who is what uh, Jesus teach. There's only one God. Uh, and Jesus, he never teach incarnation, he never teach Trinity. Uh, Isaiah 45, verse number 5, I am the Lord and there's no, uh, no other uh, from me. Uh, there's no other God, none beside me. So no other God beside the God. And Jesus will be seated on the right hand side of the mighty one, the true God, according to John 10, uh, uh, 7, uh, uh, 17 3 time, time. time. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I say time as well <laughs> okay yeah. I've no, I've, okay I've noted down some of the things Yahya said he tried to use Malachi chapter 3 to prove Jesus is not God that cannot be done because Malachi 3 verse 1 actually proves Jesus is God because when we read Mark chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 Mark refers to Malachi chapter 3 where it says that there will be a messenger in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord God now what Mark does in chapter 1 verse 2 and 3, he refers to John the Baptist as this messenger in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord and he applies Jesus as the Lord God who has had his way prepared for him. This is why we call John the Baptist the forerunner. So that verse does not disprove the deity of Christ, it proves the deity of Christ when you look at the application made in Mark chapter 1. He also says God doesn't change nature. We are not saying the divine nature changes. Yahya does not understand the doctrines of the hypostatic union or the communicatio idiomatum, which means the communication of the properties. The hypostatic union is that Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, added a human nature to himself when he entered human flesh, as we read in Philippians chapter two. The divine nature doesn't change, he simply enters creation. He used Isaiah chapter 40 to show Jesus is not creator. Jesus quotes from Isaiah 44 verse 6 where he calls himself the first and the last. That is a divine title. It proves the deity of Christ, not disproves. But Jesus is also creator in John chapter 1 verse 3 where it says that all things that were created were created by Jesus, which excludes Jesus from creation, therefore he's creator. The Apostle Paul also echoes his words in Colossians chapter 1 where he calls Jesus the creator of all things. So the biblical perspective is this, Jesus is the creator in contradiction to what Yahya says. Now I go back to my other points, Yahya did not mention the Quranic position that I brought up where Jesus is given divine attributes such as creation where he breathes life into a, into a clay bird. How does a mere prophet create? If only God has the ability to create, that's inconsistent with the Islamic with uh, the Islamic perspective, because only God is creator. But in the Christian perspective, Jesus is the creator, therefore Jesus is God. So we have no problem with Jesus creating in the Bible, but you should have a problem with Jesus creating in the Quran. And also let's bear in mind that story is actually stolen from an apocryphal account, so it's not even authentic. Do you have 30 seconds, okay. So I'll continue. Mark chapter 2, Jesus forgives sins. This is something Allah can only do. In the Quran, only Allah can forgive sins. Here we have Jesus forgiving sins. If he's just a good Muslim prophet, as the Islamic perspective is, what in the world is he doing forgiving sins? This should be shirk, but Yahya quotes from the same passages of scripture that proves the deity of Christ. Why are you quoting from these passages of scripture that actually prove the point I'm making and not the point you're making? Are you my Okay. Uh, I will continue give reference, then I will uh, I, I will respond to Ben. And uh, thank you, Ben, for, uh, for for everything. And Jeremiah 10, verse 10. But the Lord is a true God. He is the living God, the eternal King, the living God. And Timothy 6, 15, 16. God, the blessed and the holy ruler. God, the blessed and the holy ruler, King of kings, Lord of lords. 
who alone is immortal who alone is immortal who alone is immortal and who live in an unapproachable light who no one has seen or can see to him be the honor and might forever so when we are talking about the true God the true God first he live he is alone immortal he live in an approachable light so nobody 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 seen or can see and to him the honor and and the might and the power Jesus Jesus lived among his people he came out of a virgin he grew up he was mortal according to you he died on the cross he cannot be God as he died even for one second and he said he uh, Ben he add, add nature to his to himself to beget Jesus if God add a nature for him that means he changed and this is a proof the corruption of the book which you call Holy Bible it give you mixed messages which lead you to confusion and according to the Bible God is not God of confusion but is God of the truth thank you very much the, she agree with me uh, I want to come back to when uh, uh, God came and the fire and the fire and the bush and he talked to uh, to Moses and Moses asked him to to see him he said to him you cannot see me you can uh, you can see only only my glory why didn't he show if God is a Jesus why didn't he show the uh, the image of a Jesus Fine. to Moses Fine. thank you very much thank you uh, yeah yeah okay ben, oh, okay so notice Yaya did not address any of the points I made no, I will refer to them one more time and then I'll refute the arguments he's just made why is Jesus creating in the Quran if according to the Quran if Allah is the creator if only God has the attribute of creation, why is Jesus creating? He breathes life into a clay bird and it lives. How has Jesus got that attribute if he's not God? Even the Quran points to the deity of Jesus Christ in certain places. Now, I want him to answer that. Hopefully he does in his next time to talk. But I will refute some of the things he said. He brought up that in Timothy, Jesus is not God. That's a load of nonsense. If you read Timothy, Paul's whole point is Jesus is God. But if you want a clearer passage, the same author who wrote Timothy also wrote Titus. And in Titus chapter 2, Paul writes, as we wait for the appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So according to the same author of Timothy, Jesus is our great God and Saviour. The Apostle Paul doesn't disprove the, uh, the deity of Christ. The Apostle Paul affirms the deity of Christ. Perfect. He says, God cannot die, Jesus died on the cross, therefore he is God. And again, this is because Yahya does not understand the hypostatic union or the communicatio idiomatum. When we say Jesus died on the cross, the human nature died. The divine nature did not cease to exist. The Quran is the eternal speech of Allah. If I burn a physical copy of the Quran, the eternal speech of Allah does not cease to exist. It's a nonsensical argument. He also said, that Jesus added a nature to himself, therefore he is not God because God cannot change his nature. We are not saying the divine nature changed. We are saying that Jesus added a human nature to himself as it says in Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 8. Although he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God something to grasp, but emptied himself and took on the form of a servant. In that one verse we see the hypostatic union, the two natures of Jesus Christ. He also said that if if uh, Moses didn't see the glory of Jesus, therefore Jesus is not God. Now, what, y what Yahya does not understand is we have these things in the Old Testament called Christophanies and Theophanies, which are Old Testament pre-incarnate visions of Christ. For example, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 18, you see Abraham meets with, with three individuals. Two of these are called angels because they go to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. The man who stays is called Lord and God. This is a Christophany, a pre-incarnate vision of Christ. He wants Jesus' glory in the Old Testament. I'll give it to you. In Isaiah, when Isaiah sees the glory of God and says, I am an unclean man with unclean lips, he says, I have seen the glory of God. In Mark's Gospel, what happens? Jesus, uh, excuse me, in Mark's Gospel, 
it said that the, I, the glory that Isaiah saw is the glory of Jesus. So there we have Jesus' glory, according to Mark, in Isaiah. So right. yes, we do have the glory of Jesus in the Old Testament as applied in the New. All right, so you, can you rebut the points that you made? Go to the Islamic point. You're not arguing any of the points I've made. I'm, I, I, each and every time, I've picked up your points. You've not addressed my points at all. I addressed, addressed a couple of the points that you made. Uh, when I finish saying what yeah. I'm saying, okay. I will come to this. So you've had three you, terms. Each, sorry, yeah, each, uh, each, two one, terms. No, no, one this second. Is, each and every time you have gave your, your talk, I've yeah. addressed your points step by step. Yeah, yeah. You've not even touched mine. Yeah. Uh, at, least, at least, at least, at least be fair. At least be fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. We, we, uh, you're, you're holding? Yeah, go. Okay, you're holding? Are you still going? Go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, your three minutes starts now. According to Exodus 20, chapter 20, verse yeah. number 3, you shall not make, make yourself a graven image or any likeness to of anything. No other God before me is image form of anything. Uh, Jesus take a form and he is the image of of God. So one Colossians 1 15 son is the image from of a human. God ascend from heaven in a human form. God he is on earth in a human flesh another way another uh, form. Uh, when then he uh, try to say that Jesus he create like God he uh, the Bible teach uh, the Quran teach that the authority even the Bible say that the authority is being given by the father to the son to create because Jesus according to Jesus he can he said I can do nothing of myself but when uh, the true God give him the authority to give and permission to create and blow of his spirit into something to make it alive this is the sign and miracle that he performed in front of the Jew to believe that he is a sent by the true God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will find the name in Genesis 1 1 31 if you open any Arabic Bible and in Hebrew the uh, the Jew they uh, they confirm that Allah is the name of the God that they worship is only one and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he add another nature for himself this nature at least should be immortal while the nature of Jesus as he he admit that he died on the cross and he said it's finished on the cross and he gave up his life uh, how much time I have? 40... Okay. 37 seconds. As I said, uh, Jesus and, and Matthew 1.18, it gives you the birth of Jesus. Uh, Jesus, before he was born, uh, if he was born, that means he was formed. And if he was formed in the womb, that means he is not eternal. Because he has a beginning and he has a, an end. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true God, is everlasting. He has no beginning and no end. Eternal. He's the first and he's the last. And according to G Genesis, time. 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 Okay, okay, cool. So, Ben, what are you going to do? You're going you to uh, rebut the points? Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, cool. Okay. So, basically, um, I'm going to ask this question. As I've already said, bearing in mind the Quran says Allah is the only creator. He is the creator of the heavens and earth. Jesus is also a creator. So in the Quran you have two creators, which poses a problem for pure mono monotheism. Because if Allah also has a creator alongside him, Jesus Christ creates things, then it's not pure monotheism. Rather that's polytheism because you have two creators. Anyway, sorry, yeah. So also, I would like to ask you this question, Yaya. Is, is the word of Allah uncreated? Uh, we'll finish first, finish. Okay, the word of Allah, according to the Quran, is uncreated. Jesus is called the word of Allah. Therefore, if the word of Allah is uncreated, and Jesus is the word of Allah, therefore Jesus is uncreated, therefore you do not have pure monotheism, you have polytheism. Perfect. He also made a point about the Bible. He said the Bible teaches that Jesus was given the authority to create by God. 
That's not what the Bible says. Give me a verse to prove that. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 3 that all things that were created were created by Jesus. That excludes Jesus from creation. Therefore he's creator. Colossians chapter 1 says Jesus is creator of all things. Therefore he's not creator. The Bible also says that all things are held up by Jesus. Through him and in him we have our being. According to the Bible, Jesus is the eternal creator. His argument is in the, in the Old Testament, you don't see nothing about Jesus being creator. In the Old Testament, you do have a plurality within the Godhead. If you read Genesis chapter one, verse 26, it says, God says, let us, plural, make man in our, plural, image. If you go to verse 27, it then says, it goes into the singular, and God made them in his image. So in 26, you have plural, in 27, you have singular. So there you have a plurality in the oneness of God. Now going back to my point, is Allah, is the speech of Allah uncreated? Is Jesus the word of Allah? If so, Jesus is uncreated, even according to the Quran. Perfect. You've got 50 seconds. Go ahead. You have 50 seconds. No, I yield my time. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, first, if we compare the Genesis beginning and the beginning of John, we will find the biggest lie and the, and the Holy Bible uh, uh, as you call it. And Genesis, there's no mention of the word and so no mention of a Jesus are associating himself by creating. It, uh, and, and Genesis, and, and Genesis, and yeah, what? Uh, the wind blow everything, uh, including the camera. It's good that I am here to hold it. Anyway, I save your camera now. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, in Genesis, we can see that uh, uh, God uh, create heaven and earth, create everything 31 times. And there was no mention of the word at all. While if we read uh, the beginning and John, which is false and uh, a total lie, it says that the word was and the word was with God. So it even proceed the word God and somebody inserted intentionally to make it as a Jesus. He is with God, and uh, what he say he rely on John and actually John I cannot trust because. Uh, the word wasn't there as the word of God is the spoken word of God. So when somebody uh, speak and express what he think about, it's express himself and the way people understand and uh, uh, catch the idea he want or want to do or want to say. But it doesn't mean that he is himself because if I didn't speak, the word you know that who i am i am yahya but my word is the word of yahya not yahya himself because i am myself to express myself when i spoke and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he wills and spoke the word for jesus to be he said be and he sent the holy spirit and to uh, to mary and he told her you will have a word of God, his name will be Jesus, and he will be uh, a great, uh, a great prophet uh, to the Jew, and that how he came, became to be. He was blown and to marry a spirit of God, and to marry as God when he create, uh, create Adam, he blow a spirit of him, and that's the spirit we are all live by. Thank you very much. Okay, okay guys, so are you going to move to like questions only, or we uh, <coughs> Yeah, kind of like have a back and forth. Uh, okay, question, so, so question, question, question. Now, okay, now. question, okay. So, so three minutes to question him on. on Can I respond one one thing he said and that's it? Yeah, respond that. Okay, so you made the point that John uh, is wrong about in the beginning was the word, this, that and the other. Where do you think John got that type of language from? If you read Genesis 1, it says in the beginning God created. So when John says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God, and then he says that Jesus created all things, He's getting that in the beginning language from Genesis chapter one. So John's whole point there is to draw back from, 
draw uh, from John chapter 1 back to Genesis chapter 1 and show that the God who created in Genesis 1 is Jesus Christ, who he says is the creator. Well, no, no, one second. My, my no, question. No, no, my no, question. No, 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 it's not a question. It's not a question. Okay. I'm making a statement. Now I'm going to ask a question. Okay. You say you cannot trust. No, no. I, I want to ask you about what no, no, you no, said. You, you can. Three minutes you can. to ask questions. You can. Oh. So yeah, you yeah, also you, you also say you cannot trust John. But bearing in mind, this Yahya says I cannot trust God. Uh, John. God. This is the same. This is the same Yahya who uses John 17:3 as an argument. So when John suits him, he'll use it. But when John doesn't suit him, I can't trust that. Which leads to my next question. Right. If you can't trust John, yeah. you shouldn't use John in the first place to begin with exactly. if you can't trust it. Yeah. But secondly, if you can't trust John, the, the, the Quran says we are to judge by what was given, the Injil, okay? If the Bible has been corrupted, prove to me the Bible's been corrupted. Where does the Quran say the Bible's been corrupted? Because it does point to you, it does point you to go back to the revelation that was given to Jesus. If that's the revelation given to Jesus, where is, it, where is this revelation? If it's not the gospel, what is it? Okay. Uh, so answer to my, 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 my answer to you, uh, where, where does in Genesis no. is, <laughs> speak about the word? Uh, I, I will give you my time. Where does in Genesis speak about the word that it was with God when he was creating? Please. It says the Spirit of God hovered above the waters and created. So listen, when it says in Genesis, look, one second. It's the Spirit second, of God, second, but not the Word second, of God. One second, but that's not the point John's trying to make. When, G when John says Jesus is the Word who created all things, when he uses that same language in the beginning, he's getting that from Genesis chapter 1. So John's whole point is, the God who created in Genesis chapter 1 is this Jesus in John chapter 1. So John's whole point is to use the same language to make you point towards Jesus Christ to look, this is the creator. This one who I'm talking about, in the beginning was the word, the word is with God, the word was God, because John recognized there is a plurality within the Godhead. As I've said, Genesis chapter one, verse 26 and 27 points to a plurality of persons in a singular being of God. Now John recognized this, which is why he refers to Jesus Christ as the word who created. You ask me to prove to prove the corruption of the Bible. So you finished that point? I, I'm, you, I'm not going to go back point. because uh, 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 I, I'm not convinced with your answer because uh, you, the, there's no words right. in Genesis. Carry on. Because let's, let's, no, no, let's uh, go. No. Let's go. Uh, uh, so uh, no, you're, you're uh, three minutes. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Please, please, please. Uh, uh, allow me. Uh, again, in Genesis, it says that the Spirit of God hovering on, on the water. But it doesn't say the word of God hovering on the water. So there was no such thing about the word of God uh, existing in Genesis. And this is the biggest lie again, confirming that uh, in Genesis, there's only God creating such and such and such 31 times. Is this a and there were, allow me, I didn't interrupt you. Uh, while in John, you just confirm that the word of God, it was with God, and this is a, uh, uh, just an assumption, and it's not true. So, Ayaya's point is there is no trinity within the Old Testament. There's no plurality in the Godhead in the Old Testament. I've already shown you from Genesis 1, 26 and 27, there's a plurality in the singular being of God. Now, his whole point is the Jews did not recognize this. The Jews didn't recognize this. That's nonsense, Yahya. Dr. Benjamin Sama, in his writings, confirms that the early Jews actually did consider a plurality in the one being of God. If you also read in the Talmud, Sanhedrin 38b, there is a debate between a Christian and a Jew that talks about different persons called Lord and God in the Old Testament. These are what we call Christophanies. So when you say that did Moses see God and then you have uh, Jacob wrestling with God, these don't disprove Jesus being God, they prove Jesus being God. They're called Christophanies. So when Moses was told he cannot see the face of God, he cannot see the face of the Father, no. But a Christophany is a pre-incarnate vision of Christ. Pre incarnate, incarnate pre vision. Pre-incarnate. Pre pre listen, listen, pre-incarnate. Pre-incarnate. Yeah, yeah, pre pre-incarnate. Pre-incarnate, okay. okay. Pre so this pre is I'm, a, I'm learning. So this is a pre-incarnate vision of Christ. You have this in Genesis chapter 18, where there are three men who appear and uh, what happens is two of the angels, two of them are called angels, one of them is called God. 
The two angels go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. The one man who remains is called God. This is a Christophany. This is a pre-incarnate vision of Jesus Christ. That yes, we do see a plurality in the one being of God in the Old Testament. Now, you did not answer my question. I will ask you again. If the Quran calls the Bible corrupted, okay, well, I, to, to me there's a disconnect because Muslims say the Bible has been corrupted but the Quran actually calls Christians to go back Stop to check on the... yeah, yeah, please yeah. okay so Muslims today have a disconnect with what the Quran says because Muslims will say the Bible has been corrupted we cannot trust it even though Yah Yah uses the Bible to make a point inconsistency but anyway if you read in the Quran it refers to the Christians to go back to what was revealed therein and judged by that now that would presuppose that the Christians at the time of Muhammad had the real gospel and when we look back into biblical manuscripts into textual criticism we see what the Christians were reading they were reading the same Bible I have in my bag there so if we had to judge by what the Christians had in the time of Muhammad then Jesus was crucified Jesus is God and Jesus is Lord so therefore we must reject Islam so so answer that question what's the question if the Bible has been corrupted why does the Quran tell Christians to judge by what's therein? Okay. Which would presuppose, bear in mind, okay. that Christians had the Bible. Otherwise, what's the point in telling them to judge by what's okay. therein? And when we look at biblical manuscripts that we have of the time of Muhammad, they're the same Bible we have in the 5th, 4th, 2nd century. Okay. Okay. Now, ask the question. Uh, the, Quran, the Quran actually criticized the Bible in some places Where? and corrected Quran actually bring the glory and the honor to all the messenger to all even to God because and the Bible the great God and the great all the prophet and messenger as all sinner and the Quran bring the honor back to all of them Quran tell the truth about the story and the old testimony which the Jew wrote it down with their their hand and corrupted as my own op, my own, own uh, opinion I believe that the Bible have two different messages have the truth and have a false teaching that's why I spend a lot of time writing down and reading and noting down to extract the truth the truth I rely on it to convince the Christian and the Jew about the truth from the Bible and lead them back to the teaching, the original teaching of all the prophet and messenger whom never, never teach pre-incarnation, but they teach the oneness of God. The, the Lord is one God and there was no Godhead or leg head or hand, hand for God or anything uh, uh, Ben over here bring uh, God who is invisible to a form which contradict the teaching of the Bible and I rely on evidence not assumption and here here is the description of God according to uh, to the Bible which the great God God the man the lamb then he become a worm. Read Slam 22, verse number 6. And Revelation 1, 14, 16. Revelation 1, 14, 16. His head and his hair were white like wool and white and snow. And his eye were as a flame of fire. This we are talking about how God description and how he looked like a, a monster his feet like fine brass and they if they are burned and in his hand he have seven star in his right hand out of his mouth seven edged sword your God according to the Bible his tongue is like two two swords split and two this Time. is degrading for God Time. answer okay you did not you did not answer my sorry go ahead okay so you no you did not answer my question i asked you prove to me the bible has been corrupted you didn't answer that you just you just asked a bunch of questions i just give you I, did, I, I didn't interrupt you okay 
Yeah. So know, notice how notice Yaya's approach to the Bible. Yeah. It's arbitrary. He arbitrarily picks and chooses what he likes. He says he studies from the Bible to determine which is true and which is not. Now the problem of that is this. If he wants to study the Bible to show which is true and which is not, how can you determine which in that Bible is true and which is not? He's going to say, well, the Quran is my yardstick. That's your presupposition. But let's bear this in mind. People were believing that Jesus was God long before the Quran come along. The Quran comes along, says Jesus isn't God, so you look through, you look through the Islamic lenses and your presupposition that the Quran is true. You shouldn't do that. What you're doing is arbitrary. You're saying this agrees with the Quran, therefore it must be historical. That doesn't agree with the Quran, therefore it's historical. You use Gospels like John and Matthew to disprove the deity of Christ and the crucifixion of Christ. The Gospel of John and Matthew prove the crucifixion and prove the deity of Christ. But I suppose those bits aren't historical and those bits aren't true because they reject the Islamic narrative. So you have an arbitrary picking and choosing of what you like. You said Psalm 22 disproves the deity of Christ. Actually, Psalm 22 disproves Islam because Psalm 22, Psalm 22, <laughs> Psalm 22 is a messianic prophecy of the crucifixion. If you read Psalm 22, it talks about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It says his hands and his feet will be pierced. It describes crucifixion in a time when crucifixion was not even around. The crucifixion was introduced by the, by the Phoenicians to the Romans many, many centuries later. So Psalm 22 is referring to crucifixion, a punishment that was to happen to the Messiah that would come many centuries later. It's a punishment that did not exist at the time. So Psalm 22 does not disprove the Bible, it disproves Islam. It disproves Islam because Islam says Jesus was not crucified. Jesus says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. He quotes, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The same psalm which talks about the crucifixion you just mentioned. That psalm proves the deity and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, not disproves. Now answer my original question. Where in the Quran does it say the gospel, the Bible has been corrupted? But as I said, looking at manuscript evidence, we see that the Christians in the time of Muhammad were reading the same thing they were reading in the second century and they're reading the same thing we read today. If you're going to say the Bible has been corrupted, give me manuscript evidence. Don't just give me your opinion, give me evidence. Okay, you, give me, you, got, you got 15 seconds to reply on okay. that particular question. You got 15 seconds to reply. Evidence, man, not your opinion. You said it's your opinion no, earlier. All, all due respect, I don't care for opinions. I want facts. Okay. Give me manuscript evidence where the Bible has been corrupted. You got 30 seconds to reply on that particular question okay. and I'll give you three minutes. Quran, chapter 3, uh, chapter 4, and uh, chapter 2. Uh, you have verses in the Quran uh, prove that uh, God deny the Trinity and he told you uh, don't be don't exceed in your religion. Uh, Quran advise the Jew to accept his prophet and call them to submit to his will and accept all what he's doing. And I use, I use actually against you, your Bible, because I give you so much from Isaiah, which prove what God is, the immortal, invisible, eternal God. And I use as well, Timothy, the immortal, immortality of God. And Jesus, as you said, he died on the cross calling my God my God why you forsaken me if he, is, if he is God why he's calling another one God if he is God why he's calling another one God okay 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 firstly Yahya says if he's God sorry so, yeah, yeah, let him yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. No, no, okay. stop. Like, forget about the time. Let's no, talk about it. Let's talk. Up. Okay, so the, 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 what Yahya has just said if he's God, why does he pray to another God? Yes. Uh, and he shout and uh, yeah. Yahya okay, yeah, 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 does not understand the doctrine of the hypostatic union. If I ask him what hypostatic union and communicatio idiomatum means, he probably couldn't tell me. <laughs> communicatio idiomatum means the. the um, the communication of the properties, the divine nature and the human nature. Yep. The hypostatic union is the two natures of Jesus Christ. Now the two natures of Jesus Christ is not Apollinarianism or Nestorianism, where the, where the deity of Christ uh, gives up and the humanity takes over. It's not Nestorianism where they're pulled apart, 
they are there. The hypostatic union and the, and the, uh, the human nature and the divine nature exist in the one person of Jesus Christ. So this argument would work if we was Unitarians. Why is Jesus praying to himself? We are not Unitarians, we are Trinitarians. So it makes perfect sense for Jesus to pray to his Father because when he comes down from heaven, he's not going to become a rogue deity. He's not going to go off and do his own thing. He's going to continue his relationship with his Father through earthly means, which would be prayer. And this is a problem Yahya has, that his version of the Trinity is a modalistic version, which is not the Trinity, that's a heresy. That's an early Christological heresy that was dealt with by the church many, many centuries ago. Yahya does not understand the doctrine of the Trinity. He does not understand the hypostatic union. He does not understand the communicatio with Martin. He does not understand what we believe, but out of ignorance, he attacks what we believe. Now, again, I'll go back to my previous point. He's saying the Quran, no, excuse me, yeah, you said the Quran mentions the Trinity. The Quran gets the Trinity wrong. Mary is not part of the Trinity. In chapter, five of the, in chapter four of the Quran, it talks about, oh, oh, people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion. Jesus Christ and Mary and God, the Father, is not the Trinity. The Quranic narrative of the Trinity is wrong. So the author of the Quran does not understand the Trinity. The most damaging thing in this discussion today is Yahya understands more about the Trinity than the author of the Quran does. <laughs> All right, cool. Pause. Okay, Yaki, let's do a three minute wrap up on your side. And then Wrap up, no more new arguments, wrap no, up. Because everything is being addressed now. So three minutes starts now. The wrap up. Anyone who have double personality and they will grab him and put him in a mental hospital while he's telling me God, God is a trin one and three and they are separate and as well God the Father and, and on the throne in heaven God the Son on earth so and they are one and they will be seated Jesus will be set side by side by the other God so and they are one any anyone with double personality they will put him in a mental hospital Yahya's blasphemy yeah. He said that the God of the Bible, Jesus, would be thrown into a mental asylum yeah. because of the two natures of Jesus Christ. Bear this in mind, this is a man who believes in a prophet who split the moon and flew to Jerusalem on a winged beast. <laughs> so, who would be thrown into a mental asylum here? Let's, let's judge consistently. Yeah. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> he says the Bible is against the teach, uh, excuse me, I'm against the teaching of Jesus Christ yeah. because I believe he's God. Now, I know we can't answer this because this is my closing statement, but for the Muslims at home, if I am against the teaching of Jesus Christ, I ask you this, how do you know what the teaching of Jesus Christ is without the Bible? Because Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and the epistles are the earliest records of the life of Christ. So when Jesus historians go to look at what Jesus actually taught, they go to the Bible. They do not go to a book written 600 years later. So without the Bible, you wouldn't know what Jesus even taught or what he said. You have to go to the Bible. But when Yahya comes to the Bible, he butchers the Bible because it doesn't agree with his knockoff that comes 600 years later. <laughs> now, sir, now, thirdly, what was his last point? You also said that we can't understand the, the, the doctrine of the hypostatic union, therefore it can't be true. In philosophical terms, this is called a logical fallacy. It's so hard to understand, therefore it can't be true. You've engaged in a fallacious argument, I suggest you give that one up. Perfect. But I will close with this. The Bible teaches Jesus is God. He is called God in John chapter 20, verse 28. In the Greek, the Lord of me and the God of me. Jesus, being a good Muslim prophet, should have said, don't call me that, I'm not Lord, I'm not God, I'm just a prophet. He said, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe and haven't seen. Jesus uses Old Testament names to refer to himself. Isaiah 44, 6, I am the first and last. Revelation 1, 17, Jesus says, I am the first and the last. John 8, 58, before Abraham was, I am. Moses said, uh, God said to Moses in Exodus 3, 14, tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. So when Jesus claims to be the I am of Exodus 3, 14, he claims to be the God who sent Moses. The Jews understood this as blasphemy because in verse 59, they tried to stone him to death. According to the Bible, Jesus is God. In uh, the Quran, G the Allah is called the first and the last. Jesus is called the first and the last. Why is Muhammad stealing a title of Jesus Christ <laughs> and applying it to Allah? 
he should not do that, that's called theft, which is against the Ten Commandments that your Moses gave. Secondly, fourthly, sorry, when we, when, we look, when we look at the biblical narrative, when Jesus says in Revelation chapter 1, I am, the first, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is the Alpha and the Omega? God himself, therefore Jesus is God. So my Muslim friends, repent, come to Jesus Christ yes. and reject the knockoff that comes 600 years later. <laughs> Thank you guys, thank you, Yakya, we love you, Yakya! Come to Christ, Yakya! Anyway, <laughs> thank you, God bless. Thank you, thank you guys.